to a very special guest. She's been the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for South Asia and understands the dynamics of the global politics around what's happening better than virtually anybody else. Alisa Ayers is a Senior Fellow for India, Pakistan and South Asia at the Council on Foreign Relations and really one of the top global experts on South Asia. So ma'am, welcome. It's great to have you back with us. I want to start by Thank understanding you. from you your reading of the conversation between Prime Minister Modi and President Trump where in the statement that was put out later it was publicly admitted that China and the current situation along the border was also discussed. What are you making of what's going on? Right. Well, the first thing that I found most interesting about this is that our knowledge of the contents of the conversation comes from India's Ministry of External Affairs. We don't have a full readout uh, coming out on both sides to be able to compare. Uh, make of that what you will. One of the things that I found most interesting about it was the fact that in the MEA's readout of the conversation, it referred to the fact that, uh, I'll read directly, they spoke about the situation on the India-China border. Now, that comes on the heels of a quite strange week where last week we saw uh, tweets from the president where he offered to mediate and then he made remarks to reporters about having spoken with India's prime minister who was reportedly in a bad mood, <laughs> only to then find from the Indian side that they had not spoken since April. So what I read from the MEA's statement describing the contents of the conversation was confirming that they indeed had talked about these border tensions, which everybody around the world is aware of in any case, uh, but providing a kind of restricted sense of what that conversation really was. What's your sense of the thinking in China? At a time when there's a global pandemic, Beijing opening multiple fronts in Hong Kong, Taiwan, the South China Sea, and the line of actual control, what do you make of the rationale that's guiding and propelling Chinese adventurism? Uh, to me, this is a very open question, and I hope that our colleagues and experts who focus on China and Chinese foreign policy uh, will continue doing the research to provide better insights into this. To me, it, it actually is a bit of a mystery why they would want to be pushing on so many fronts all at once. As you mentioned, it, it's not just with India, right? It's, it's across the areas where they have some significant territorial claims and tensions with other countries. Why they would decide to open this front with India at this time is hard for me to understand. Uh, I don't know why they would want to increase tensions with India at this time, but that certainly is the step that they have taken, and I think we all need to sit up with alarm. The responses from the External Affairs Ministry in China seem to suggest that their belief is that President Trump is trying to fish in troubled waters, trying to set India up against China because it suits the American diplomatic agenda at this time where there's in any case an escalation of tensions between DC and Beijing. What's your sense of how the president views the current situation, the role that he would like to play and given the mess in the United States at this moment, can he be even trusted? Yeah, L let me... Uh put this into context in the foreign policy context, and it is certainly the case that we are uh, in turmoil domestically in the United States right now. Let me bracket that for the moment. Um, what we have seen over the course of the last couple of years has been a real convergence uh, across both Republicans and Democrats in the United States of the level of concern at the way China's foreign policy has been heading. Um, there is not always agreement on the way to address this challenge, but I think there is substantial bipartisan agreement that China now is uh, uh, seeking to assert itself in ways um, that are not in keeping with what we had previously understood about China's interests in its own rise. And that has meant uh, 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 periods of assertiveness, even aggression, um, involving U.S. treaty allies. I think now uh, the standoff at Dokulam in 2017 was a real eye-opener for many of us in the United States following, following these issues closely. Um, so to see a kind of resurgence now of a land territorial border issue uh, between China and India that does appear to be spurred by uh, Chinese PLA activity, uh, it, it reaffirms this issue, you know, this kind of sense that China is now in a, in a mode of greater assertiveness 
Um, and that raises questions about how we understand how it sees its own role in the world. I would take as a separate but related issue the question of how President Trump sees himself and his role as a global mediator. Um, we have seen him present himself as a global mediator with North Korea. He has had his own uh, ongoing trade negotiations with China uh, that have not fared too well, as we have all seen. We saw last summer President Trump offered to mediate between India and Pakistan on Kashmir. Uh, so I would take his India-China offer of mediation in, in the kind of the same mode. He, he sees himself as a deal maker, even though at this point it is quite clear that his international diplomatic efforts have not been successful. So I think that is the way he sees himself. It's his first go-to. He sees himself as underappreciated on the world stage, should deserve a Nobel Prize, a Peace Prize for all the work that he's done. We've talked about this before. Uh, and I think that's what was at the root of his tweet last week with this offer to mediate that seemingly came out of nowhere. In case the escalation, uh, in case the border face-off with China prolongs, what is the role that you think the United States will play? They've come in, sought to support the Indian side. India has said, we'll deal with China bilaterally. We don't need your intervention. How do you see the U.S.'s role play out if this were to continue beyond the 6th of June? That's hard to game out, but it's a really important question. I, I think it would certainly um, require some level of deepening the India-United States conversation. We do have a strong security and defense dialogue that has continued in the Trump administration, although we have a great deal of tension in other areas. Um, uh, but I think the question here is, is what are the steps people could take? And that's something that would have to be discussed very deeply by both New Delhi and Washington. Um, the Trump administration has taken a number of steps independent of the India-China tension issues, but you can see how it's clear that the Trump administration uh, is looking to increase whatever pressure it can place on China in other arenas, um, for example, with its declaration that Hong Kong is no longer autonomous. Let's see how that unfolds and whether this now escalates further in some of the other arenas of U.S.-China uh, tension that have been, frankly, uh, increasing uh, in, in large part due to, to China's steps. Alisa Ayers, for joining us with your very sharp insights and deep experience. Thank you very much. Um, you've Thank kind you. of laid out how the U.S. is seeing the situation and what can be expected from here on. Hello everyone, this is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.